Welcome back to the Dear Future Husband podcast. I'm your host, Christian, and today we are diving into another prayer for your future husband, this time on his sexuality. I'm going to be honest, this topic is a little daunting. One, because of the importance. It is such a key factor within your marriage, your your sexuality and your intimacy, but it's also so misconstrued and heightened right now in singleness as men are out there and they're waiting to meet their wives there's just so many temptations there's so many false narratives and false allowances that i want to come alongside you and even alongside my husband even as we're married to protect them to guide them to ask for god's wisdom and interference like it feels like a football play and i know we're girls here, you're like, football, my husband's running the ball. I'm going to need people to come alongside him. I'm going to need prayer just to keep protecting him, to, to run the race up before him and not be distracted by what we see so heightened today in our sexualized culture. Now, I know that's a slightly Debbie Downer type approach to starting this episode, but it's just the reality of why we pray. We pray for protection. We pray for provision. We pray for uh, a surety and confidence and and muscle to these men that we are praying for. We want to aid them the best they can and set them up well and set ourselves up well as we become couples. And look, the truth is, I don't pray for my husband enough and neither will you because there is no enough amount of times that we can enter the throne room on his behalf and ask God to move in his life. But I want us to pray with enough belief, with enough passion, with enough assurity that our prayers are powerful, that we're giving them legs, we're giving them uh, these nets to go out and, and to reach God's ears and just petition for this man that we love already or will love one day, especially on topics where we think, gosh, is that possible? Or I'm struggling in that area too. How dare I try to pray for my future husband? No, let's go in with confidence, with hope, and let's let this time of prayer even renew our minds of what we believe is possible in our marriage, in our own life, in our culture, in our friends. You know, let's let's start the narrative right now. Prayer doesn't have to just be this idle, complacent thing of, well, I'm just going to bless my future husband. No, we're going to go to war. That's part of what we get to do as women is believe, see change, interact, have faith that we can shift our lives, the lives of others, and the lives of all those around us. Now I'm bringing in three verses today because I want to make sure we have a good understanding of where we should be landing, what the word says. Sometimes this is divided on what's allowed within faith, within dating, that gets messy. So instead of me just trying to say, hey, you should pray for your husband, have this and this, let's go to the verses and let's see what the Bible tells us to pray for, to believe and what to do. We're going to start with Luke eleven thirty four. It says, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body also is full of light. But when they are unhealthy, your body is also full of darkness. So what we want for our husbands are healthy eyes, not eyes tainted by seeing things they shouldn't be looking at or partaking in things they shouldn't be doing. You know, it's not just the eyes, but I believe the eyes are the lamp to the soul. You, What you see, what you do, what you say from a man's heart, so he speaks. So we want to make sure those gateways into who he is, what he interacts with, are being purified. They're going to be clean. They're going to be... Um, kept from things that they shouldn't see. I'll pause here and say we want that because we want to be full of God. We want to be radiating from within and we don't want anything that's going to be taking our minds askew. So sexuality itself, intimacy, love, romance, all of those things, they are not bad. But when we see them in a lens that is not our own, when we are partaking in them, like feasting in a way that is not actually time to feast, that's when it becomes that darkness. So if we want this man that is just like on fire, got it all together, like he walks the walk, he talks the talk, he looks the part, he's got to have healthy eyes. He can't be 
being distracted, being tainted, being taken away from the things that God's calling him to, and he needs to be focused. And that focus comes from what he's setting his eyes to. So that verse to me is inspirational. This next one is directional. 1 Corinthians 6, 18, flee from sexual immorality. All the other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. And I can feel like the, the tension right here. Maybe this is what I was saying earlier. If you think, well, I've messed up in this area. I can't pray or I don't feel like I can actually speak this from authority. All of the word is written and given for direction, not for condemnation, not for guilt, but for redirection. And so if you have been in this camp of not honoring your body, not honoring others' bodies, uh, awakening love before it's due time, take this as a time to also flee now. Not just, well, I messed up and I didn't flee, so I'm going to be stuck in this camp. No, no, you can leave that camp. You have full permission to honor God with your body to ask for cleansing, for redemption, for like this washing, which honestly is so refreshing and rejuvenating. Fleeing is not just a past tense thing where if you missed it, then miss that opportunity. Stinks for you to flee right now. You have full permission to live anew and to live in the purity that he calls us to and that he offers us. We want to pray with this verse in mind because we want to make sure our body and our heart is not like our flesh and our soul are not fighting against each other, but are complementary. So when we get those two in alignment, uh, we see this enhancement of our whole being. And then I want to land on Philippians 4, 8, because we've had inspirational, directional, and then I think this is missional. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Men especially are vision-led. They see things, they articulate, they say what they feel, like everything is honed in on this vision that they have. And so for their sexuality, it's not just what they see can taint them, but also what they see can lead them. So if they can see the blueprint for a healthy marriage, if they can see the the benefit in waiting on God's timing in all things, but especially his sexuality, then they can see, hey, this is the vision I want for my marriage, and I'm going to follow that. So in the same way that we started out by saying, hey, there's a lot of things that can be seen. There's a lot that's going wrong. You know, men are just active, physical creatures. They want, want, want. Let's turn that this is, this is why I so believe in prayer and I so believe in praying for your future husband because we can alter realities with the things we choose to believe, the things we choose to speak and partner with. So let's take that same thing that can be a hindrance and use it as a strength, asking for God to give him that vision that will lead him and equip him. Now, this is another post that we had started the conversation around, and we're going to expand it here, so it might sound familiar. You can actually share this episode or share this post that I'm referring to on Praying for Your Future Husband Sexuality, which is at our handle at the Dear Future Husband Podcast. You can share that with a friend, either one of those, and invite them onto this journey too. Maybe you just want to do this alongside someone, or you think hey, there's someone that I think really needs this. I'm going to send it to them. I'm so honored to get to pray with you for your future husband. And I ask you, take a second, invite God into this, believe for it with gratitude. And let's pray for your future husband. Lord, I pray over my future husband. His sexuality is a gift from you. While the devil wants to use it to confine him, you have made everything beautiful in its rightful season. I pray that you guide him in a cleansing from anything he has done or temptations he has faced. I break off the hold it had on him now. Show him what or who to remove from him that was a gateway. Thank you for your redemption, and I ask now that you will show him how to believe for more. In your kindness, teach him how to renew his mind and bless his sexuality. Give him the self-discipline to honor you with his body. Teach him patience to wait on the best form of physical gratification. 
keep his eyes from temptation, and strengthen his mind with a vision for our future. Thank you for making purity and passion alike beautiful with your guiding. What a privilege it is to be able to pray for these men, to pray alongside you. Thank you for coming on this journey, and I hope that you're subscribed so we can keep these prayers together, that you can keep listening to our other content as well as we have guests on. We go deep diving into topics and questions that you have, which you are welcome to ask within the comments, within the ratings, reviews, and I cannot wait to see you next time on the Dear Future Husband podcast.